That is time capsules present. The place where she stood seemed to him a holy shrine. Or rainy days at the bookstore. I've recently stopped to think that for the very first time that this thing I do in basically all my vlogs of including some clips of me getting dressed to some nice music might not be super interesting for the viewer um, but like since I've started taking this whole content thing just a tad more seriously I've realized that I really my brain just really isn't wired um, for this game of trying to capture and keep the most attention possible um, and I feel like if you're hearing this, you can be thinking like that's so pretentious Everyone like tries to create what they think is best. Not everyone is just focusing on getting attention But I do think a lot of people online absolutely are creating content based on what they think will get more attention And I am not judging that at all. That is smart. That is good business And that is a talent and skill on its own to know what will get the most like results um, and it's important when your livelihood depends on that but i'm just so like ritualistic and one track minded when it comes to my creating i've said this about writing before but the way my process is just so esoteric can pose a big problem for me sometimes and i think that applies to like other content creation because i just refuse to kind of make certain sacrifices or surrender to the quote-unquote good choices so basically what i'm saying is the cute getting dressed clips are staying. Um, please ignore the sound of the AC. It's very, very hot and I just refuse to have to endure the heat. Um, but basically today was supposed to be um, like a filming content day for me. Like I had set some goals yesterday, um, but it woke up super duper rainy and gloomy and I was also tasked with a lot of side quests by my mother so i just went to the shoe repair store um to a restaurant to pick some food up and to hello look at him <laughs> and to the dry cleaners excuse me um so i just didn't you know the day just didn't make sense with my plans but i'm gonna edit i have like three videos on like the editing board that i haven't finished they're all like halfway through so if i can edit all of those today i will consider it um a win even if i can't film anything i'm analyzing this lighting like is it too bad i think it's fine kind of um but i don't know we'll see i'm gonna eat now <laughs> Um, before we left because we were in such a hurry because my mom was kind of late um, but my mom had like a meeting at a cafe at this bookstore so you know me if I can go to a bookstore I will um, so we went and she had her meeting while I browsed um, and then we ate together so we spent like many hours there um, I decided that I was only gonna buy one book because if I like go into a bookstore without either like a clear desire for like a specific title or like a limit to how many I can get, I will get into like credit card debt. Um, and my mom said she would pay for one, but no more. So I ended up getting Anna Karenina, um, which is a book I've wanted to read since, I don't know, since I exist. But it's always like been really intimidating to me. Not necessarily because of size, because like I'm a big book reader <laughs> in the sense that I read big books. I love a brick. I love a book that you can kill someone with. But something about it, um did you hear the thump my braid just made? Um something about like just Tolstoy in general and specifically Anna Karenina, I've always been like 
you know, it's so hyped <laughs> to use that word that might seem a little bit um, appropriate for that title, but it's so hyped. And, you know, when you spend your life hearing like, this is the novel, this is the best novel ever written. Um, this is like a quintessential masterpiece. I think I always kind of feared what I thought it might do to my soul. Um, but I did have it at the very first spot of this year's TBR. And I don't know, the like the bookseller there just really like sold it to me. So I was like, let's face this fear and just read it. And um, not to be super like stereotypical, but I love reading like Russian literature um, at the end of the year. Both because of that sense of finality that the New Year's bring, but also just because of that association with winter and like Christmas time, you know, snowy, all of that. I don't know, I'm not, I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm excited to read it, you know, it's huge, but I'm already like 100 pages in, I think. I'm sorry reading it while there. This edition has a foreword by Thomas Mann, which I really, really like. I have to go to bed early today because I have um, my workout really early tomorrow. So I'm gonna take a quick shower, get into my pajamas and read a little bit more, I guess. I'm thinking a lot about what reading is meant to be as an activity. I feel like that's the sort of like discourse that appears often on like book spaces and book twitter and booktube or book talk. There are so many social medias, oh my god. Um, in the sense that whenever people criticize a book, authors will always say, well that wasn't what it wanted to be, that wasn't the point, that wasn't its purpose, and it's always like, so what is the purpose of a book and also what is the purpose of reading because <laughs> so here's a funny story sorry i'm so meandering when i talk when i was 11 i think when i turned 11 i like did a clean out in my um bookshelf because i've always been an avid reader i've always had a lot of books i did a clean out and i basically like took out and donated all my like ya books and i only kept the classics I decided that I was 11, <laughs> so I was now very serious and mature, and I could only read classics, which is absurd, obviously. But I do see in that action, like, a lot of pretentiousness, and also, like, a sign of insecurity from a young girl who always felt like her intellect was her worthiest bit, and who always tried to like soothe her feeling of alienation from her peers by impressing them with multisyllabic words they didn't understand and that never worked because i've always been the kind of person who's like too serious about things people will say to me often oh you must be fun at parties like in twitter discussions and like i do think i'm fun at parties first of all because compartmentalizing but it's true i've always been like more serious than people around me, I felt. I think in that time, you know, 11, 12, middle school years, that kind of thing, I always felt very different from everyone else because I've always been so, I'd say devoted. I've always been so devoted to the things I've loved. It's always been serious to me, you know? It's never been just fun. And I'm not saying it's bad if you feel like you read for pure entertainment. But for me, I've always been so invested in those actions invested in my loves to a point where to me it has something grander every book i read i count as a change towards the nature of my soul the alchemy of my being so i guess yeah i'm not fun at parties because i start talking about things like this <laughs> I don't think it's bad, I'm, I'm happy that my loves are so enormous, so intense, so, so consuming. And I'm happy that reading is one of those because I do think that I have added so much to me through words. And 
I'm happy to keep doing that and being serious about that activity.